Hello, welcome to Terminal 5 at Heathrow. Today we're heading over to Singapore on BA. It's a 13 and a half hour flight. We're going to be in economy at the back of a 787-9. Come along for the ride, let's try and figure out how we're going to survive it together. First up then, let's check our bags in. Like most economy starts at Terminal 5, this is on the self-service checking kiosks. They're easy to use and we soon had our boarding passes. It is a little bit of a pain though, having to then go to another desk to deposit your luggage. It's a case of scan, load your luggage, print your tag, attach said tag, confirm, and away your bag goes. Security took about 10 minutes and then we were into the departure lounge. This was our Christmas trip so we headed for the Plaza Premium Lounge accessed via our Dragon Pass cards. There's a variety of seating, a staffed bar and a reasonable food offering. Most importantly for Mary and I as Christmas, the lounge had some great views outside. Drinks were all included with the exception of Prosecco, which was five pounds a glass. We killed a few hours getting acquainted with the bar and me getting absolutely thrashed at Monopoly Deal. A cracking travel game by the way. Oh, well, I need a cold so one. So we now have a gate, we're heading over to B, what's the number? 45. B45. Just come out of the Plaza Premium Lounge, not a bad way to spend two or three hours. Head over to the B gates now then, we're going to get a little shuttle train across, so we're going to head down to the escalator now. Uh, and we'll get on the shuttle train, we'll see you over there. We travelled on the Friday before Christmas, and as you can see, Terminal 5 was very busy. So getting on the shuttle train now, nothing behind me, everything seems to be in front of me. Two minutes until the next one, and look at the amount of people that are here. There's our 787-9 right behind me now. That's going to take us all the way to Singapore tonight. 13 and a half to 14 hours. I can't wait to get on board. Helping us survive is Mary's United Airlines business kit, featuring hydration boosters for the lips and for the face. And face or eyes? Face. We would now like to invite priority customers in Group 1 on British Airways Flight 011 to Singapore to board at gate B45. Don't forget to do your stretches before you board. There's no space on the plane. Given BA's current performance on baggage, especially around Christmas, we're air tagging our suitcases, not looking too promising as we board. It's the green light for us and down the escalator we go. That's us through the boarding gate. Let's get on board. Let's go. Hi, how are you? Do you want the window? Yeah. I thought you would. Hi, Grant. Very good. Uh, you all. Okay, so that's us on board now. I'm in the middle. Warman's got the window. I think we'll swap later. Um, plane is really hot, so the Christmas and Merry. The show is your Merry. They might have to come off pretty quickly. Um, no overhead air vents on this 787. As you can see, we've just got the lights. 
that's fine. And a polo mint. Apparently my breath smells. Let's see what we've got on the seat waiting for us now. So we've got a blanket waiting on us. Standard itchy blanket, nice blue colour. Let that drop down. And then we've got our standard Speedbird propeller-like pillow. These are all right actually. Had these before. Should be pretty decent. Got the standard IFE. I'm not a fan of these, I actually prefer the ones that were on their 747s earlier. But the screen is slightly adjustable. I say slightly, but they're going to piss the person off in front of me. You've got the usual control mode here. Everything's on there with the keyboard on the back. I'm trying to get that back in is always the challenge. USB port there. That'll be handy later on for my USB-C connection. Nope. And then I do like these half latch tables too. Nice half latch there. Or half table rather. So the room's actually fairly decent. Got a water ball there. But where, where there's the gap, there's where the room there. There's nothing obstructing the seat between the two here. You've got the, the box down there obstructing the aisle seat to the middle. So I think that's fine. So we've got plenty of leg room between the two of us, which is great. Let's have a look at the armrest. There's a bit of tape around armrest actually, so there might be something wrong with that. I'm not sure what. But as with all BA seats on the economy, it only goes back part of the way, so there'll be no cross seat cuddling or sleeping there, which is really annoying. Actually really awful for couples. We're in seat 42. 41, of course, is the infamous no window seat. So we've uh, tactically planned to get this one here. How are you feeling? Next, not sure. In terms of the headrest, it goes up and down, and it's got these nice little predetermined positions here. So you can lean in and lean in this way too. Up, maybe a bit higher, and then back down. See, does recline, and we'll try that out once we're in flight. We'll cover the IFE detail later. But either my fingers are broken or this screen is super unresponsive. After a bit of sitting and waiting, it soon became apparent that not everyone's in-flight entertainment was working, like the whole row in front of us, and a few more scattered throughout the cabin. The crew did try and reboot, but each time it seemed to fail. So we started our pushback and the tug has broken about 100 yards into the pushback so we're now blocking the taxiway between B and C gates. Hopefully they can get it fixed and get the tug off and get a new one on, uh, just adds to our delay this evening. It took 30 minutes for the tug to be fixed before we could then eventually carry on our way and get into the de-icing queue. We continued our scenic tour of Heathrow before taking off around three hours after we got on board. As we climb out and leave London behind, let's chat Wi-Fi. So there's free Wi-Fi for first class, and you'll need to enter your booking details in order to get access to that. There's also two paid for options, a 4.99 and a 2.99, which on the face of it is pretty reasonable. However, take note, these are from prices. You'll only get an hour of access for 4.99. If you buy the flight pass, it works out around £1.70 an hour. 
Messaging is slightly better, a uh, fiver for the whole flight. I didn't buy either of them. I figured that most of the people that I would have messaged were probably sleeping anyway, given it's an overnight flight. 45 minutes in and our first snack came around. I went for a Diet Coke and the classic airline pretzels. Although they offered up to two soft drinks each, they were pretty tiny cans. Dinner's on its way, let's find out what's left at the back. Chicken noodles by the sounds of it. Let's find out. Chicken noodles. Do I have a instead? Separately not noodles. <laughs> right, so we've got our meal. What have we got? Chicken and rice. Pretty good. Right. There's our chicken and rice. Got some other bits as well, some milk, butter, a bit of cheese. Side salad, I guess. So right there to finish off is an apple, blackberry crumble and just uh, I don't know, maybe a little bread roll as well. So we'll drop some of that butter and cheese on there. So we can get a salad oak cracker. Bread roll is out. It's cold, it's fairly squishy. So but it's not a nice warm roll that I was hoping for. Let me know in the comments, what's your favourite way to roll a red roll on the plane? Can you tear it? We'll get her open, we'll get the knife and just carve your way through. Each to their own, I suppose. I'm going to tear this one. Butter is very cold as well. It is real hard. Next up, more of the sourdough crackers. <laughs> I'm not sure I can get cheese on that. It's good after eating. Finally, we've got dessert. Best bit actually, it's quite nice. Let's chat in flight entertainment next. These are the headphones that economy passengers are provided with. Annoyingly, for the person sat next to us, the headphone socket on his seat was damaged, meaning he couldn't listen to any of the IFE for the whole flight. British Airways do now show adverts before every movie and every film, but unlike some other airlines, you can fast forward these. It's a bit annoying though, right? After that, it's a quick trip to the loo before heading off to sleep. The cabin windows were set to night main mode, meaning no one could brighten them. I had a broken sleep and woke up with three hours to run to the east of India. Whilst the rest of the cabin stays snoozing, we've got some work to do to start feeling a little more sprightly. So we've got three hours left to run now. It's around 7 a.m. UK time. So one of the things that I like to do on a flight is have a clean t-shirt to get into, especially on an overnight flight. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm going to freshen up a little bit. Breakfast will be in around an hour, I think. Um, local time in Singapore is around four o'clock, three, four in the afternoon. So I kind of want to be awake now, make sure I stay awake. I'm not sleeping any longer than what I would do um, if I was at home. So that's what I'm going to do now. So let's get the bag out get clean, get sorted out, and 
thankfully this loo's pretty big and there's a baby change stamp here too so my bag can go on there and I can sort myself out In classic fashion, as I started brushing my teeth we hit a rough patch and started bouncing around the sky. And don't worry, this water is from a bottle, not the aircraft tap water. A quick wipe of the face and we're done. That's how to freshen up and feel more alive after 10 hours on board. Half an hour later, as people started to wake, I found myself with the window seat in full recline. You can really see how annoying these armrests are. The second meal was served an hour before touchdown. More chicken and rice for us, which is interesting as UK time this would be breakfast, but Singapore time we're landing into and that's the evening. There were no breakfast options available. It was a decent meal though, and again dessert probably was the best part for me. Being an hour out the windows were still dimmed, I couldn't see outside. So I asked the crew and they admitted that they'd forgotten to unlock the dimmable function. So just starting our descent now down into Singapore, we're just flying down the coast of Malaysia. A new part of the world for me, quite excited, but I thought it's a good time for us to reflect on what this flight has been like. Finally got the windows uh, unlocked about an hour before we had to just prompt the crew to uh, undo that because they'd, they'd forgotten that they locked them in the unadjustable uh, mode so they've been dark for most of the flight and so is the cabin um we've been sat on this plane now the best part of 15 and a bit hours it'll be probably 16 16 and a half by the time we get off and you know what i don't actually feel too bad um i don't feel like i've been sat on here that long at all obviously it would have helped if we hadn't have had such a big delay getting out of heathrow we're doing on the ground now we'd have been off getting our bags and heading on down into singapore but i think overall BA have been fairly BA today. The crew, as always, have been pretty good. Always uh, nice and attentive, happy, friendly. The food, we got two full meals, I suppose you'd call it, two main meals in economy. Um, the first one was a chicken and rice dish, sort of standard stuff. A um, bit dry, wasn't the best, but we got your usual like bread roll, as you saw, and all the, all the other bits. So that was, like I guess, the, the full meal. And then about an hour before landing, we got the second meal, which we, we weren't quite sure what to make of it actually. Like we, obviously we've just woken up, we're on UK time still. We thought maybe a breakfast, but we actually got a Thai red curry because um, obviously we're landing in late evening in Singapore. So I guess it kind of helps with the jet lag and adjusting your body clock to try and eat food in the time zone that you're in. Uh, but the second meal was actually much better. You didn't get as much there. Um, no sort of extras around the sides like crackers and, uh, and a red roll. But the meal was much better, a little uh, more moisture in the chicken and the rice was cooked pretty well as well. I think all in all, BA is BA. The hard product is, is not the best hard product, the IFE is not the best IFE. Food's usually pretty decent, it's normally edible at least, unlike some meals I've had on, unlike some meals I've had on airlines like United. Um, but yeah, I really do wish that they would change the seat design so you could recline the armrest fully, really or retract the armrest fully. Um, all in all though, decent flight. We are going to be flying back on BA, back to Heathrow in two weeks time. That'll be all at night, so that'll be an interesting one. As we start the approach, I did get a little wet from this condensation dripping down the wall, but you know, these things happen. Before we start that final approach, let's quickly chat through how I booked this and how much we paid. 
We booked via BA.com and we used an American Express two for one voucher. You pop your destination and your dates in as usual, but select to use the voucher as well. I booked this on the 30th of December 2021 for travel on the 16th of December 2022, 351 days apart. BA release seats 355 days before departure, so we're lucky to still have availability here. BA guarantee at least eight economy seats per flight, and each of these count as a reward redemption. We're looking at 35,000 Avios and 489 pounds and 12 pence for two people at the start of Christmas holidays. A key perk of using reward flights is the flexibility. We could have cancelled this booking up to the day before departure and we would have only lost £35. We get a checked in baggage too. In case you're wondering, I added a return leg to the trip once the seats became available. This can only be done via the call centre and made the return flight cost 35,000 Avios and £359 per person. Let's get on with landing then and drop into the hot and humid Singapore air. Here's a quick look at the seat before we alight and don't forget row 41 is missing a window on both sides so avoid this one. So there we have it, what do you think of your 16 hours on board of BA787? It's alright. It's alright, that's the definitive response I've been spending that long on there. We're in Singapore now, we're going to clear immigration, grab our bags and we'll see you later on. Okay, so there we have it. We have landed in Singapore. We've collected our bags and we've just come out into the jewel. How amazing is this? Look up there. I've heard all about this, you've heard all about it, seen so many pictures, but I didn't think we'd actually walk into it. That's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. As ever, like, subscribe, give us a comment, and we'll see you in the next one.